Hi, I'm Brock Archer with Advanced Extrication. We're here at the Tesla Motors headquarters in Palo Alto, California. We're gonna take a close look at the Tesla Model X. It's a unique vehicle and it may create some challenges for rescuers at roadway incidents. In this short training video, I'm gonna talk with you about the high voltage components within Model X and the high strength steel that surrounds the Falcon wing doors and much of the passenger compartment. And I'm Randall Wells, Assistant Chief with the Denver Fire Department. I'm gonna walk you through a step-by-step -step process that allows access through the Falcon wing door along with total sidewall removal. Like many manufacturers, Tesla uses advanced steel in the construction of the body structure. It's to protect the occupants in the case of a collision. For rescuers, it could present a challenge. In the Tesla Model X, we have dual phase 980 and boron steel in the B pillar of the vehicle. It runs from about the roof rail down to just below the striker. We also have boron steel in the roof rail. That steel runs from just behind the B pillar down the A pillar, about halfway down the window. If we're gonna be using hydraulic rescue tools to do a total sidewall removal or roof removal, we wanna be aware of this steel. If we have trouble overcoming it with our power rescue tools, we wanna use workaround techniques. Later, Assistant Chief Wells will show you proper workaround techniques that we developed for the Tesla Model X. Let's take a minute and look at the high voltage components within Model X. It's very similar to the Model S, so in this video we'll only be talking about the changes that were made to the high voltage system. If you're not familiar with the Tesla Model S, go back and watch the Tesla safety training video that we made for the Model S. That will give you a good foundation for watching this video. So like I said, the electrical system, the high voltage electrical system has remained almost entirely the same with a, with a few changes. We still have the 400 volt floor pan mounted battery. One change that has been made is that the DC to DC converter that was a concern for us in the Model S, it's been moved from the wheel well location on the passenger side to the center of the bulkhead, what is often referred to as the firewall. Although there have been no incidents where dash displacement was required in a Model S, Tesla made this change to make it safer for rescuers to interact with the vehicle if front end damage does occur. In addition to the change in the DC to DC converter, the charge controllers are no longer located under the rear seat. They're now located in the driver's side quarter panel in the rear of the vehicle. So the high voltage cabling travels out of the 400 volt floor pan mounted battery up into the rear quarter panel on the driver's side. From there, it travels from the chargers across the rear door sill, just below where the hatchback latches, across to the rear quarter panel on the passenger side. There it meets another high voltage component. From there, the high voltage cabling is much like we found it in the Model S. It travels into the rocker channel or rocker panel up into the bulkhead front fender area of the vehicle, where it stays clear of most of what we would need to do for dash displacement as it enters the bulkhead and reaches the DC to DC converter. Shutting down the high voltage and isolating it to the battery is important anytime we're gonna do any cutting or crushing on any electric vehicle. The Tesla Model X makes it easy with the first responder cut loop located here underneath the front trunk of the vehicle. We simply lift up this panel and access the cut loop. After double cutting the cut loop, the vehicle is made safe for our operations by isolating the high voltage to the battery. Of course, we can never assume that the high voltage has been completely isolated to the battery, and we must always treat all high voltage components in the vehicle as if they're live, regardless of any shutdown procedure we've taken on any high voltage vehicle. 
the isolation and shutdown procedures for all high voltage vehicles remains the same. After our 360 size up, if we've deemed the incident safe to enter the hot zone, we're gonna chalk all four wheels on the outside of the wheels. Electric vehicles move silently, so we wanna do this to prevent movement of the vehicle. Then we wanna enter the vehicle if safe to do so, shut the vehicle down and utilize the parking brake or emergency brake within the vehicle. At that point, we wanna follow the manufacturer's shutdown procedures to isolate the high voltage to the battery. In the Tesla Model X, that includes shutting down the ignition and utilizing the first responder cut loop. You can look at the Tesla ERG for the Model X for more information on high voltage shutdown. The Model X is equipped with 10 airbags to protect the occupants in the case of a collision. The most unique are the airbags located in the Falcon wing doors. That's in both Falcon wing doors. They're located in this area here and they deploy up and over the side windows of the Falcon wing doors to protect the occupants. It does the job of a roof airbag, but because the airbag couldn't be placed in the Falcon wing door, it's located here in the lower portion of the door. It's a lot like what we would see in a late model convertible. There's also, of course, two airbags in the front two seats, on the sides of the seats, to protect the occupants there. We've got the standard steering wheel and front passenger bag as well. And we've also got roof airbags in the roof rail in the A-pillar location here and on the other side. We've also got knee airbags for both of the front occupants. For more information on the specific location of the airbags and the inflation cylinders, take a look at the Tesla ERG for the Model X. Now let's look at the various openings on Model X. The doors, the luggage compartment trunk area, and the front trunk. The Model X has some unique openings, and so it's important that we talk about it in this video. And it's also good to look over again the emergency response guide to get all the little details on opening the Model X. When extrication isn't required and we need to gain access to the vehicle, a lot of the openings on the vehicle can be controlled with the fob key. It looks like a little miniature Tesla Model X. Anywhere on the vehicle that we'd like to open, we can simply depress that area twice and it will open up that area of the vehicle for us. We'll show you that in a second. There's one exception. To, to open the driver's side front door, we simply depress the roof of this fob key twice, and that'll open up the driver's side door. Otherwise, of course, pressing on the sides will open the Falcon wing doors. The front will open the front trunk, and the back of the key, depressing that twice, will open the lift gate luggage compartment area of the vehicle. Let me take you around and show you the various openings on Model X. One thing to keep in mind is that if 12 volt power is not present in the vehicle, of course, the fob key will not open the vehicle in any way. We're gonna take a look at the front trunk first. Of course, the Model X doesn't have an internal combustion engine that takes up this space. So this area is left open for luggage compartment area. We call it the front trunk. Like I said, we can open the front trunk with the fob key by depressing on the front of the key twice, and that'll open it up. After we've pressed the key, it will simply present itself in the open position. We don't have a lever or anything else we need to do afterwards. We simply just lift the front trunk up. If we lose 12 volt power, we have no other options for opening the front trunk. So Tesla has included a second option for opening the front trunk for first responders. Of course, like any incident, we want to check all the luggage compartment areas for any hazards before we take action on the vehicle. It's part of our initial size up of the incident. So the option for opening the front trunk when there is no 12 volt power is down here in this area. If we open up this area here where we would normally insert the tow hook, Often many late model vehicles have a tow hook in the front that you just screw into place for towing the vehicle. That's no exception here with the Model X. 
Underneath this panel, as you can see here, we have two pull strings. Simply pull on these two pull cables, or these pull strings, and the front trunk will release itself. That will give you access to this area when 12 volt power is unavailable. Now on the side of the vehicle, let's take a look at the doors. We've got the front door and the Falcon Wing door. The front door can be opened just like we opened the Model S door with one simple exception. When we depress the door handle on the Model X, the door just presents itself. And then we can open it and close it at our own will. With the Falcon Wing doors, we depress the handle and the door opens all the way out and up on its own. So without 12 volt power, we're not going to be able to open the Falcon Wing door from the outside. In that case, we need to use the emergency release cable put in place for first responders. It's here underneath the speaker grill on the inside of the door. We simply remove this speaker grill and then use this cable to open the door latch manually. Once the latch is released, we can lift the door up with a single rescuer without any problem. It should stay in the open position at that point. We have two other options for opening the Falcon Wing door from the inside if we have 12 volt power. One is this red button here on the outside door sill of the door. We simply depress that button and the door will close. We can also use the occupant switch inside the vehicle located here on the B pillar. Lifting this switch up will open the Falcon Wing door from the inside. Pushing it down will close the door. The lift gate on Model X acts as most lift gates, with a couple little exceptions. I'll show them to you. So to open the lift gate, of course, we can use the fob key by simply depressing on the back of the key twice, like we mentioned earlier. We can also reach underneath the Tesla logo here, like we see in most lift gates, and simply depress it, and the gate will open itself up. To close the lift gate, we, we've got a couple of options. We can use the manual close button here, or we can also depress the back of the fob key twice once again, and the lift gate will close. In the event of 12 volt power loss, we can utilize the emergency lift gate open switch just here underneath the little light in the center of the inside of the lift gate. We pull this trim out away from the lift gate and pull the cable inside. That will release the lift gate manually if we've got 12 volt power loss. Now our first step. We're gonna utilize a variation of the vertical crush or spread to attack the upper sill, remove it, and gain access to the inner hinge. Now we're gonna have our crew go to work. We found in our research that the door is gonna give in two specific locations, where the sill actually meets the door and in the upper area of the sill. If the window gives in the upper area of the sill, we're gonna go ahead and cut the hinges to get a release on the Falcon door. Now we're gonna step back to the B post and utilize our spreaders to lay down the Falcon wing door. This will give us access to the latch and also to the manual release located in the speakers. Now we're gonna have our crew remove the door completely.
Next, we're gonna make a series of cuts. Two in the shape of a pie, and a third angled in towards the A-pillar. This will allow us to work around the ultra high strength steel located in the upper areas of the B-pillar. Then we're gonna drop down. When we do this, we need to recognize the location of the striker and the pre-tensioner. It's crucial that we make our cut between the two. This will allow us to circumvent the ultra high strength steel located in the bottom of the B-pillar. And this will complete our total sidewall removal. I hope this video has given you some tools and techniques to have a safe and successful encounter with the Model X. The intention of this video isn't to be standalone training. It should accompany training that you receive from a qualified EV instructor. We want to thank Hearst Jaws of Life for supporting the training, and especially Tesla Motors for once again raising the bar in how auto manufacturers and first responders can work together. I'm Brock Archer. I'm Randall Wells. Thank you, take care, and be safe. It's on you. <laughs> <laughs>